Okay, so um, you know we talk about uh, training the single stick and the double stick and the single sword and the double sword. Okay, when you train stick, you can be training both stick and sword because the stick art came from the sword art. I know that there are specifically just stick arts. Balintawak is a strictly just stick art, um, but I like the full aspect because if you look at it and you understand it. You know, you can, you can use the stick, you can use the impact weapon, and you can use the edge weapon if you have one. And, you know, I say, well, when's the, you know, when are you going to carry a sword around with you? It seems like I have one in my hand almost every day in my line of work. <laughs> but, you know, what I really think, and I don't have one with me because it's 85 degrees outside, but an ice scraper. And I want you guys to think about the ice scrapers that, that fan out and have the sharp ends, right? All of a sudden, that's an edge weapon. It can be an impact weapon, right? But you can cut and scratch and scrape with the edge of those. So if you understand the edge weapon motions, then you understand both the blunt impact weapon and the edge weapon. They coincide. So how did these things fit together with what we've been looking at so far? Um, uh, one thing we, we had just talked about, which I thought was great for everybody, is that some people I notice will do this on their inside deflection. Is little, instead of coming over top, they want to do this, more of a check block motion. And, and this is normal, because we see, we see this punch. Okay, because we see it here all the time, right? Those a bunch. We see it in empty hand systems where it comes underneath, you know, and, th and that's fine. But when we look at the weapon, okay, on top is almost a better way to go. For me personally, this is why I believe this to be. If I go underneath, okay, it only leaves me top section. I still have places, things I can do, right? I can cut down, okay, I can go straight in, okay, I can go puño, but I'm only high. I only have the top area. If I use the proper inside deflection and I, and I go underneath, okay, then I can go low, I can go medium, and I can go high. I got everywhere I can go. And that's one of the reasons why we look at that particular hand posture. So what if it's a spot adaga, right? Very common form in the Philippines, okay? So now when it cuts the hand, there's your thrust automatically. Okay? If, he, if he comes up and he blocks, we cut the hand, okay? If he doesn't block, he gets cut in the throat, okay? If he tries to block the knife, he takes it in the hand and this follows by the, by the blade. So this is important because this immediately, there's our follow through. So the blade comes in. So if we learn the check hand, then we learn the knife, right? It's automatic. Same with the, with the outside deflection. When he comes in, you know, we, we're looking at this motion here, okay? Well, we also see it here where we immediately cut in with the knife. And if we immediately cut in with the knife, that means we've got this, right? Or we've got this and it can go high, okay? Or we come right here and we just cut the arm, we don't even worry about it, right? If, if I can, I don't even worry about the stick. If I can, there's your cut, and there's your ride with the blade automatically. So these things are important to understand your inside and your outside deflections. Because when you learn that hand, you're starting the beginning of training how to use the espada daga, the long and short or your primary weapon and support weapon, however you want to look at it.